Hello everyone, it is Teresa from Jason Scott, all things are. I love sharing our own art and teaching with you how to create a little joy in your life through some simple, easy beginner art tutorials. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to August PIY, Meet It Yourself, Autumn Glow. Um, I have my face for ready. Let me know. Let me know if you're watching or then and painting or watching and then going to paint. And also, let me know if you like this setup better or the other way. The old way, um, I'm toying with what I'm going to do. This has me side by side, obviously, you can see me side by side. The other one has me big, and then with a little um, picture in picture in the top. So let me know in the comments what you like better. And if you're watching first, um, and then going to paint, or you're painting with me. I know I paint a little fast, y'all. Two reasons, because I think fast, and I really, like I talk fast. You guys, it is a struggle for me. I'm doing my drinking now, so I've lined it up where I need it. I'm taping it with a little hinge, and I'm gonna put my carbon tape on here right now. So, it is a struggle for me, you guys, to talk slower and eat slower. That is really why I pretty much only have one cup of caffeine a day. If I have a second coffee, iced coffee, it will be decaf. Um, you guys, let me put this. I'm gonna make this a little wonky because I want to bring this up a little bit. Because sometimes we have to make our tracer work. Okay, so there we go. I want my up there. I'll show you why. So yeah. So I really try my best to slow down for you guys. But the beauty, the beauty of this is that you guys have the video. See what I want to do? I want to make the whole circle up here, so I needed my printing paper up there. You guys have the video. So if I go too fast for you, which I probably do, you can pause it, um, catch up, hit the play button, go to the ladies' room, go have some dinner, whatever. So, but the other reason I eat fast is because I'm kind of encouraging you guys to paint fast as well. I feel like we all organize every brushstroke, every long frame, every time with the brush to the surface, we're scrutinizing our work. And I want you to just paint. Put the brush in the paint and just paint. It is a good paint. You can fix anything. You can come back later on, and if you don't like something, add a flower, add a leaf, go over it, leave it, and just embrace your art the way you ended up. It's all okay. All okay. So I am just going to do this element and when I say the element I'm talking about the two pumpkins and the lantern. I think you guys and it occurred to me when I was painting this for practice I love this lantern. This lantern comes from um maybe we'll put this in here. I don't know if it's able to see it later but we'll just do it. This lantern comes from um, Tracy Kiernan, painting with Tracy, but I love it. I'm a long term membership, so I have permission to use this design and artwork. But I love it, and I think this one's cool. I think I'm going to use the lantern and do other seasons. What do you guys think? So, um, you're here in my group. Watch out for that because I'm going to use this lantern. Maybe we'll do one for Christmas, um, for winter, for spring. How cool is that? So I got rid of that. Some of my long lines on my lantern need a little bit because my carbon paper is a little used. A couple hundred times with that carbon paper. I forgot one of the lines here. So I'm just going to fill that in on my lantern. Again, not using a ruler. I'm not worried about it. I forgot this. Um, this is my did. This one goes up kind of curly. That one has like a Loop to it, that's fine. It's all good. 
this came around, I kind of lost my shape here. So I'm just taking my pencil and put it in. Okay, I can see my lines. You may not be able to see your line. I have out a mess here because I painted something else earlier. But I do, I have my burnt sienna, my black, and my white. I have a little bit of yellow and blue, but we're going to get those. We're going to first start out with our burnt sienna and our white. And um, I'm going to use this brush. I'm painting on a 9 by 12. You may be painting on a number 12. You may be painting on a book. You may be painting 11 by 14. Um, it's up to you. So let's see where I can put my paint with this new setup where you guys can see it. Let's start my uh, time lapse. You know, I always forget. There we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Got my water, got my paints, wet my whistle, and let's go. So I am going to dip into my burnt sienna and my white. And I want to just put a little bit of a smush in here, get them mixed up. Okay, and I'm going to go back to my burnt sienna and back to my white. I want the areas around my design to be lighter. I'm painting these diagonal strokes up here to the corner. I'm going to just pick up some white. I want it lighter, like I said. And the areas, corner, next to my design, I want a little bit lighter. And I'm just doing diagonal strokes. I'm going to go right over the top of this um, stem and picking up corner. And then neat, so it's like 25%, 75%. I went right over my stem. That's okay because we're going to go back and then we're dark brown later. And picking up more paint as we go along. And I'm just doing these rough. And ring, but diagonal stripe. We're going to darken it up in the corner. When I go next to my design, I use my brush on the chisel edge to make it a little darker. I mean, to make it a little straighter. And I'm going to keep working my way around. I'm following the same. I hopped over here, but I'm going in the same diagonal direction. Pull it away from my design a little bit. Get into here. Go around. And then come back over. So my strokes are all going the same way. And they're all going diagonal. So every time I pick up more paint, I pick up mostly white. And then I dip the corner in this burnt sienna. My burnt sienna is... Um, folk art color. Most of the time I don't differentiate, differentiate from these guys, whether you do folk art or um, plaid, I mean uh, folk art or deco art. The deco art paints are a little thinner and a little um, less money. You can get them easier too as well. But there isn't always that much difference except when it comes to yellow ochre. The yellow ochre for Deco art and the yellow over for plaid could not be more different. It's the most bizarre thing. But I'm just following around, painting in my background. And I'm using random and short diagonal strokes. A little bit, a lot of it, and back to it. It's okay to do a little bit of your pumpkin. We do these in a certain order. It's totally okay if you get some on your um, lantern. The lantern is black and we can cover that up so easy. Mm -hmm. I'm making my lines in here um, diagonal again. And don't worry about it in there. We're going to clean all that up when we get our black going when we do our pattern. But for now, we're just gonna let it ride. Mm 
and going up the page a little bit here. We're not going to worry about that. Okay. Now, very carefully, we want to darken up our corners. I need a little bit of red for now. So I have my dirty brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of red. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of the art sienna that we've been using. And then I'm going to get the tiniest, tiniest bit of black, like a pinhead. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a bigger pinhead. You don't want to put, you because always make it darker. It's easier to add than it is to take away. So I'm just darkening up the top here. Red, burnt sienna, make it a little bit jagged, random, smoky in the corner. And then coming over here with a little bit of black and then mixing that in, bringing it across. The darkness in our corners is going to help our lantern glow. Autumn glow. It's going to help our lantern just pop. I'm going to bring down with my dirty brush a little bit of this color onto the sides. That's it. You can make your corners as dark um, as you want. Maybe you don't want them too dark. I'm adding just a little bit more touch of black up in here. Just a little bit more, just a little bit more on the very, very edge of my brush and swirling it around. Okay, now I am going to wash my brush. So oh, actually I didn't have to because we're going to do something else. Okay, now we're going to come down here to the bottom. I'm going to total black. So if you didn't know where to wash your brush, you don't have to. And I'm going to, this is, I need another line. This is the bottom of my lantern here. Okay. And then the rest of this is going to be black. To there, to there. Okay. So now we're going to fill in the room with straight black on the bottom. Go around my pumpkins. I want to be a little careful here around my pumpkin. Although we're going to come back in and we're going to paint our pumpkins, black is a little harder to cover over. So if we don't get too much black on our pumpkins, the easier it is when we're painting our pumpkins, the less we have to fix or tweak. Okay? This is our table. I'm going to wrap it around on the edges. You can do your edges, you don't have to do your edges, it's totally up to you. And I'm not going right up to the bottom of the lantern, I'll show you why. I'm sticking to the bottom here of the tabletop, or whatever we're calling it, the shelf, the ground. And I'm just wrapping this around here, okay? Now I'm gonna pick up some white, because under here, we want it a little bit gray. We want to be able to see the difference between our lantern and our table. So I just took a little bit of gray in there, swoop it under my pumpkin a little bit, and then just lightly blend it in. Okay, so we just want this to be gray, the rest of it's black. I want to bring the gray down a tiny bit. Your black should still be wet and it should be um, blending really nice. We don't want too much of a contrast. We're going to come back to that later and add in yellow from our glow from our lantern. Okay, so that is it. We want this to be a little bit lighter. And we want the bottom here on the ends to be darker. And then we're going to bring our glow in when this dries, okay?
All right, now I'm going to wash my brush. Right. I'm still using the same brush. Now, I have some of the yellow paint out from before. Um, it's called sunflower. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white just to brighten it up. And I'm going to paint the inside of my lantern. If you have a brighter white, I'm um, brighter yellow, sorry, that's totally fine. I like this yellow. I have some left. I'm just going to use it. And I'm just coming in here. I want all my lines to be vertical. And I want to cover the entire inside. You can go right over your lines. You should still be able to see them or reproduce them for the panes in your lantern when you're done. Again, don't worry about if you get some on your pumpkins because this is yellow. The only time we really had to be careful about getting paint on our pumpkins is in the bottom with the black. And even if you got a little bit on there, don't fret. It's all okay. Okay. So there we go. I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the burnt sienna right on the tip of my brush. And I want to almost, so this is what I'm doing. I'm picking up a tiny bit. I'm using my brush on the flat. And I'm just picking up a tiny bit, almost dry brush. And I'm pulling it in and down. Flat, my brush is at a 45. Now I'm pulling it up. If I wanted to, I could do this, turn my painting upside down. And pull it in. Add a little bit to the sides. This is just making a little bit of shadow in your lantern, okay? And you can make as much as that or as little of that as you want. Okay, okay. now we left the main center bright white and we added a little bit of sienna to the tops and the bottoms. All right, I'm going to wash my brush. Now, you can use, if you're using this little flat brush, you can continue to use this little flat brush. Or if it's easier, you can use a smaller flat, flat brush or a round. I'm going to continue with this brush. We're going to do the black on our lantern now. Okay. Whatever brush you think you can use, I'm getting pink on my arm, is the one you should use. and the one you feel most comfortable with. So I'm coming down here, I'm just gonna paint the bottom. And to start with, we're just going to fill in all of our lantern. Okay. Up here, I'm gonna use it on the chisel edge. Get nice straight lines for my downs. And then I'm just gonna come in here and fill it in. Again, if you wanna use a smaller brush, you don't wanna use too small a brush because you don't want A, to take hours, and B, to have a gazillion lines. Okay, so you really want to use the brush that's going to work for the job. But I understand if you want to use like a smaller brush. And I'm just filling in the black. Paint. 
And I guess you can always tell I get a little bit more quiet when I'm concentrating. So it's hard to tell the different segments in our lantern right now, and that's okay. We're gonna fix that. So we have this angle part, and we have the part around the light, then we have the top part, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna work all that out. It's just a matter of um, highlighting in certain areas, making it a little gray, and then later on coming back and adding in some white highlights. We always want to make sure that we're doing our brush strokes in the same direction. So if you're painting something with horizontal strokes, you want to keep that going. If you're painting something with um, vertical strokes, you want to keep that going. I just want to fix these corners. And you know what's going to happen? My, I don't want to make my lantern grow and grow and grow. So I'm going to be happy with that for now. Okay. Again, I'm going to come over and pick up a little white. And I'm going to start adding a little bit of white up here to this top part of our lantern. Just want to lighten it up a little bit so you can tell what is the top. Okay, same thing under here. A little bit more white. This is on the flat. Pull a little white down here, put a little white down here. And this is the flat part on the face of the lantern. And then this part is where it's a little bit ornate. It's almost like that part is sticking out. And so we want that part to be really, really dark. And then we want a little highlight on the face and then the top. Okay. Now I am going to wash this brush and go to a smaller brush. You can use a smaller round. I have a little flat one here, so I'm going to use my little flat one. Now I'm going to do the top part. And we're going back to um, complete black. No lightening it up, we're graying it up here. And then you may have a complete circle up here. Yours may have gone off. Either way, I'm going to paint that in now. If you have a little trouble, you can always grab something to trace with. Okay. So I'm going to add one little tag of highlight there. Okay. I'm going to put a little button where that connects. And then I'm going to wash my brush. Okay. Now, if your lantern is pretty dry, I'm going to grab that small brush again that I just used. I'm going to give it up a little clean. I'm going to get some fresh white. And I want to come in here and I want to really brighten up the center of my lantern. Getting a little fresh white. And I'm blending it up top and bottom. So we can see that our lantern is glowing. Oh, picked up a little bit of dark there that time. I have a nice bright spot in there for the center of my lantern. Okay. Alrighty. 
Now we're going to go to our pumpkin. You guys can make your pumpkin. So these pumpkins are blue, aqua, blue, patina, and like a creamy white. You can make your pumpkins whatever color you want. That is just the palette that came with this design. And I have some light blue out. I'm going to put out some of this aqua blue, which is a gorgeous color. I'm going to get my original brush, which is about the half inch flat. And we're going to start on our pumpkins. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this total aqua blue. And I'm going to completely paint the middle section of my pumpkin. I want my brush strokes to follow the curve of the pumpkin. Fill it in the middle. Okay. And as I work my way out to the segments, I'm going to pick up a little bit more of this. I'm going to pick up the aqua, but I'm going to add a little bit of this lighter blue to it to do the next section. This way, we want to see the difference in our sections of pumpkin. Same thing over here. And again, we're still making the curvy lines. They start up in the middle, they hug each other, and they follow the curve of the pumpkin. Okay. This one could be a little thicker. There we go. And now I'm going to, and I need the brush white. Still with a dirty brush. Pick up a little bit of white on my dirty blue brush and do these last segments. So as we work our way out, our pumpkin gets lighter. And we can see the differences in our sections of our pumpkin. And it kind of gives the illusion, well, it does give the illusion, it gives the illusion that our pumpkin is round, which it is round, but obviously we're painting it on a flat surface. I'm going to in here. I just want to blend a little bit with my wet brush so I don't have totally striped. Okay? And I'm going to wipe my brush. Okay. Now we're going to get all the blue out. And I'm going to do the same thing with this pumpkin. I'm going to start out with fawn. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of white first. To lighten it up. And I'm going to paint the middle section just the way we did with our first pumpkin. Making our middle section the darkest. Okay. Then I'm going to add some white. Now, because our canvas is white and this is a light pumpkin. The contrast is going to be harder for you to see and harder for us to create, but we got this. And then you a little bit more white and come out here for this side. Over here, I got a little bit of background in there, but I'm okay with that because I was able to cover it right over. Okay. And then we have our next pumpkin. And we're going to come back in here. We're going to add some details, and you're going to be able to see the segments. I'm just darkening this up a little bit. And then we have to see the lighter segments on the outside there. You know, we get there, you get your little black brush, you get your liner brush. I have a brown here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Let me use my brown brush. 
Let's dry it off really good. Get some fresh black. And we want to paint in our stems. So I'm going to twirl my brush so I have a nice point on it. Even though it's a brown brush, we want to have a nice, see how nice and pointy that is? Okay. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add in the segments of my pumpkin and start painting it my stem. The stem comes from the top of the pumpkin. It all gathers here. And then for this stem, we want to work our way up and give it a curve. Okay, do the same thing over here. And then the stem just goes straight up. My stem over here is a little close to my lantern. So I'm trying not to, I'm trying to leave a little space in there. And then we're just going to pick up a little bit of white and we want to add in some white to our stem. Not too much, just want to lighten it up and this thing over here. Okay. All right, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add the line for my laser. You can do this now or you can wait till later and, and much later. When your painting is 100% dry, if you feel like you don't have a steady enough hand to do the lines for your lantern, you can wait until you're done and you can use a um, black paint pen, a pasta paint pen, or a Sharpie. But you want to wait, you want your paint to be completely. 100% dry. Okay. I am going to add them in here. This way you can see what it looks like finished. But if you want to wait and then you need to wait and then go back to the ruler and redo your lines again, totally up to you. Okay. I'm going to pop them in here. And there we go. Brush your brush. Then we want to come down and go back to this small one. Back to your, your flat one. We have a one. We've got the flat brush you're comfortable with because we're going to go back into our yellow. And I want to mix a little bit of yellow and a little bit of this burnt sienna. Just a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of white to it to wrap it up. Okay. And then I'm going to add it in down here, the glow from my lantern. Okay, a little bit more yellow. You don't want to too far out, because presumably under your pumpkins, there will be um, shade. But I'm just adding this glow here on a little bit more white. And I'm using the brush on the flat and then on the chisel edge just to get a little bit different look there. So up, to, up and down on the chisel edge or on the flat where you want it a little thicker. Okay, and then we have that nice glow underneath our, onto our table, where our lamp is shining, okay?
I'm going to go back to my larger brush. Okay. And now I'm going to grab some white, my brush, not too much. If you think you have to wipe it off, wipe it off on your paper towel, your tablecloth, whatever it is. And I'm going to follow the shape. And I want to add a little bit of white highlight to the top segments of my pumpkin. That's it, almost like a dry brush. Where the segment meets the stem, following the curve of the pumpkin, we're just pulling in. You wanna make sure that your stem is dry, okay? And then we're gonna flip it. And we're gonna do the same thing. Follow the curve, a little bit white, and pull up. Follow the curve, a little bit of white, almost dry on your brush, and pull up. Okay. We're gonna do the same thing for our little pumpkin. A little bit of white, follow the curve, pull down, flip your arc, a little bit of white, and there we go, add some highlights. Then I'm going to grab on my dirty brush, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black, same thing, tiny bit of black, turn them upside down again and just a little bit of shadow, just a little bit. It's almost gray, not too much. Mix it in, put a little bit on there, just a little bit. A little bit, not too much. Go the other way. And pull up. Okay. For our tan one, we're going to add, I'm not cleaning my brush, we're going to add a little bit of this um, burnt sienna. Just a little bit. Your brush is practically dry. Okay. There we go. Let me wash my brush. And I want to come in here. I'm going to fix under this um, blue pumpkin a little bit of my black. I feel like it got a little bit um, blue on it. I got a little bit carried away with the shading. I mean, with the um, light, the glow. And so I just want to come in here and cover that up a little bit. And then I add some of this in there. That's it. Okay. Now I'm going to get my liner brush. And I just want to grab a little bit of, um, I guess, the black. A little bit of the black. Make sure your liner brush is twirled. You want it nice and thin. And we're just going from the top, pull down a little bit, a little bit. Okay. And the same thing up from the bottom. You can turn your art around like we did um, when we did shading. Okay. Take it. Down. Okay, very light touch. Again, it's harder. You can wait and do this with a pasta pen, but you want a very light touch. You don't want totally solid lines. Okay, now I'm going to um, 
Uh, I think I'm going to do this right now. Okay, so I'm going to wash my liner back. Rinse it off. And I'm going to go into my dark green, my fresh dark green, we shall see. I'm going to just add a little bit of water to it, mix it up. So I have my liner brush. When you use your liner brush, if your paint is too thick, you want to grab a little bit of water and you want to give it a twirl so you have a point. Now I have this stem in here that I painted in here before. Or trace the there on it. So I'm just going to follow it up. Okay, we want that one. And there. And then I want to do, grab a little bit more water. And these curly cues, you might over practice on your surface, on some copy paper before you do them, okay? I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to add some curly cues into my stem. You can do these with black if you want because our stem is black. I like it with the green. But it's your art, so you can do it whatever way you want. Okay. We'll wash that again and go back to our round brush. I have my two greens here. I have um, Hauser Dark and Hauser Light. And I'm just going to use my flat brush and lay it down and pull it up. Lay it down and pull it up. We want both greens on our brush. We want to add some pressure and then pull it up. We want our leaves to meet at the stem but go in the diagonal. If you can, make them a little bit smaller as you go up. That's good. If you can't, they can be all the same size. That's fine too. If you need to go over them, that's okay. And I'm just working my way up. I like them to be on a little bit of a slant. They meet at the stem, and then I always put one at the top. And then we have that nice little brand of greenery tucked in there. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush. Now I have dark brown. Do you guys have dark brown? If you don't have dark brown, you can mix a little bit of um, black with your burnt sienna or your fawn. I do have a little bit of dark brown. I don't remember if I put it on the list or not. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to put a branch going behind the stem and then shoot them off. When we make branches, we like them to be in these. Okay. And then use the back of my brush with my red paint. And I'm just going to add some clusters of berries here at the end of our branch. Okay. We're not done with those, that's just the first one. Like that off. Okay. Now you can use your round brush for this or your um, liner brush. We're going to add a few little flowers. We're going to add one here. We're going to add one down here. I have a little piece of chalk, but you could use a pencil. And then we're going to add a few working their way down the side. Okay. I'm going to get my white paint. Pick up a little bit of the yellow 
And these are just going to be very simple, um, like five petal flowers. You want them to look like gingerbread. So we're going to put one, two, three, put some more paint, four, five. Okay, back to our white, pick up a little yellow, and we have our dot there. We're going to do one, two, three, four, five. And I say the like gingerbread because sometimes I'll go head, arm, arm, leg, leg. Okay. Head, arm, arm, leg, leg. Head, arm, arm, leg, leg. If yours are wonky and you need to have six pedals, you know what I always say? Don't cry. That's okay. You will have six pedals. Totally fine. And then last but not least, I'm going to put one down here that kind of fell and is by our bottom of our tan um, pumpkin. Okay. With the same brush, you can go into black, you can go into burnt sienna, you can go into your brown, whatever you want. Today I'm going to go into my burnt sienna and I'm just going to add my centers. Okay, and wipe the brush. Okay, and then back to our liner. Now we want to connect these flowers somehow. So I'm going to come to my liner. I'm going to, I might need a little bit of water. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my green paint. Give it a nice squish. Give it a roll. Now you might want to do this in black. Maybe did your curlies in black. You want to keep it in black. It's totally up to you. I did my curlies in green. I'm going to keep it in green. And we're going to come up and we're going to keep these. Okay. It's almost like we have a vine. Work in our way. Make a little bit more loops. Then this one is going to pop through here and come out. And then it's going to come out and give a little twist. You can come in here and give a little bit. Design to them one. Okay. And that is it. That is it. That's it. Here is our oh no, it's not okay. Okay. Back up, back up. Beep, beep, beep. We'll go back into our fresh white. And you want to add a little bit of white if your red is dry. Mine's still a little wet, but I like to go back in and add a little bit of white highlight to my berries and my branch. Okay, clean that off. A little white. There we go. Maybe I will do a little bit of white. Not to all my leaves, but to just to some of them. Okay. A little bit more white on certain sections of the lantern. Obviously, we don't want to do this part or this part. Okay. We want those to be standing out. I am going to get a little bit of now because I want to clean up this line. Okay. 
And the same thing here. Clean up that line. If you're nervous about cleaning up your lines and you think you're going to make it worse, just leave them. Okay. There we go. I'm going to clean up this line too around the top of my lantern. You may not have the top. Your tracer may have flipped differently than mine did. You don't have the top. That's okay. Okay. We gotta do the side line. There we go. I think that'll do it. I think that will do it. Okay. So, so, so. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for joining me for PIY. I will be seeing September um, very soon. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.